Tonight, your opinion will count on a new survey to manage our natural resources. And sound that siren as a new footy and netball season begins this weekend. This is Southern Cross News with Alison Drower. Hello, Ali Drower, sitting in for Tim Hatfield, who's continuing to enjoy a short break. Also ahead tonight, helping those who help us as the Royal Flying Doctor Service begins its winter appeal in Wyala. But first, jobs and growth have been high on the agenda of a meeting of local mayors and MPs from the Upper Spencer Gulf. The three cities are trying to stay resilient against job losses and industry uncertainty. But all parties are looking for a long-term positive outlook. A bond that is helping keep the Upper Spencer Gulf together. Although you know, sometimes we come from different political parties or or uh, have different interests, uh, it's 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 really crucial that the the MPs and the mayors are all on the same page. I'll give credit to to all the MPs that that do sit around that table because they do put the party politics aside. The group met once again last week, and although much of their meeting is kept confidential, they believe it's a positive year ahead for the region. We are going to see a very confident and buoyant future for places like Wyala. We're already seeing it in Port Pirie, particularly with their four percent unemployment decrease in the last quarter. And with so many voices from different levels of government, the group aren't afraid of making their mark. We're going to keep being that loud voice and we're going to keep advocating and fighting until we get our fair share of the resources and allocations across South Australia. While in Adelaide, the three mayors also attended a local government meeting. Again, this is a platform for them to voice their opinions. We could collectively come together and buy bulk and save and actually all stand up as regional mayors and as regional cities and say, we in the regions believe we haven't actually had our fair go, we haven't had our fair share. Now, there's been a lot of uh, work done around um, procurement, local government procurement, uh, environmental issues, how we can better manage our environment. Keziah Sullivan, Southern Cross News. Broken Hill will soon be welcoming some new police recruits. Of the 178 new officers graduating from the New South Wales Academy today, Broken Hill has been allocated four probationary constables reporting for duty next Monday. A chance to have your voice heard on a wide range of issues from roads to our rivers and beaches. The State Liberal Party is in community consultation mode and has launched an online survey to influence the influencers. Port Augusta, it's time to speak up. Member for Stewart Dan Van Holst Pelican is urging us all to get online and take part in two surveys released by the state government and the Shadow Environment Minister. I'm very often frustrated by the fact that decisions are made in Adelaide uh, that affect our area, but local people are not consulted properly. One of the surveys is gathering feedback on natural resource management with questions ranging from NRM board structure to where levies should be spent. What are the strengths? What are they doing really, really well that people would not want to change? But what are the things that they would like to see change and have improved as well? The second survey focuses on what transport routes can be improved and any road user can participate. Uh, productive, useful suggestions uh, could be improvements to roundabouts, corners, highways, overtaking lanes, all of that sort of thing. On this survey, participants are asked to detail their experience with problem areas, places in need of improvement and how they'd like it resolved. Users can also rank road issues in their area, like allowing triple road trains to access the service station right here near Yorkie Crossing. Yorkie's Crossing could definitely be sealed. They need that to be sealed for the bigger trucks because there's a lot of banking up out at the service stations because if that's closed they can't go nowhere and they can't go across the bridge because it's only a single lane road. Both surveys can be completed online. Amelia Simpson, Southern Cross News. The Broken Hill Mosque will receive over $100,000 to preserve both the inside and exterior walls of the building. The New South Wales Government will donate $56,000 each year for the next two years to upkeep the mosque as part of the Heritage Grants Program. The historic temple was built in 1887 and is very popular with visitors to Broken Hill. The work there, much needed work there, will be able to be looked at. And I think for anyone who wants to have a look at the mosque, go down there. It's an incredibly old building. It is a religious place. And so therefore, you know, when you walk in, you feel the heart of it and the soul of it. 
Federal MP for Grey Rowan Ramsey is encouraging Port Augusta businesses to attend free seminars next week to hear how Australia's free trade agreements can help them find overseas partners. The first seminar is next Monday at the Kadena Football Club and the second is on at Port Lincoln Hotel on Tuesday. Now you do need to register online at austrade.gov.au. After the break, all that recent rain has meant nothing but blue skies for farmers ready to start seeding for what's expected to be a bumper harvest. You are watching Southern Cross News. Recent rainfall is making our grain farmers feel very positive about another good year. Most are already hard at work on tractors, making the most of the perfect soil conditions to get ready for sowing. Farmers across the region have had a dream run when it comes to their crops. First they blew the harvest record out the window. I had 86 mils in September which is makes or breaks us so it was um, yeah, our best production year by a long way. And now a good batch of rain has provided perfect sowing conditions. So we did um, some dry sowing last week before the rain with some vetch and then we're on to wheat now. Leighton Johns has been running his family farm for many years now and is impressed with Mother Nature. The winter break this year has come really early which is it's always ideal for us um, but there's plenty of blokes around that wouldn't have had much rest at all I wouldn't have thought. There's always plenty of work for the farmers already Leighton and his crew have sowed 800 hectares of land. Uh, the cedar over there is putting the seed and fur in the ground and uh, with the press will be behind to uh, really get a good, good germination on it. And once the sowing is out the way, it will be a matter of controlling the weeds and pests. And just managing crops and hopefully we get some follow-up rain to uh, you know, assist this good start that we've had. Keziah Sullivan, Southern Cross News. Broken Hill residents will next week get a first look at the draft plans for the city's new archives. The design team will be displaying its vision at an open day at the Charles Rasp Memorial Library at 2 o'clock on Wednesday. The open day gives locals an update on the progress and also the chance to provide some feedback on what they would like to see. The relocation as well as creating a digital version of the archives has been made possible through a $3 million grant by BHP Billiton Foundation. Wyala is being asked to give back a little to the Royal Flying Doctor Service as it launches its winter appeal. If you've lived in a rural community, there's a fair chance you or someone you know has needed the Royal Flying Doctor Service. Its annual May appeal is back for 2017, with the funds used to purchase vital life-saving equipment. Meeting our shortfall in operational funding, and also our capital raising for aircraft and medical equipment. The charity aims to raise $7 million in South Australia alone this year, as the region is asked to acknowledge the value of a much-needed service. Wyala, Port Perry and Port Lincoln receive nearly 1,400 flights a year between them, while Kadena handles on average a flight a day. We rely on the support of the community to, to keep our service going and, and equally the community um, helps us in return, so uh, it's, it's a great symbiotic relationship. And even if you're one of the few who have been lucky enough not to need the Flying Doctor, Mr Patterson says they are always there for all communities. I mean, you never know when you might need the Flying Doctor. We're here for, for all Australians, both the city, country and, and outback. For details on how to donate, head to our Facebook page. John Hunt, Southern Cross News. And the Flying Doctor is now using wheels as well as wings to improve dental health. A new mobile dental clinic, complete with a chair and x-ray machines, has been built onto the back of a five-ton truck. And the van will be shared between bases in Dubbo and Broken Hill, making stops in Yunta and the Kumba Roadhouse in coming weeks. Port Augusta residents can expect extra traffic through the city next week, but not the kind that we're used to. Vehicles and troops from Adelaide will be making their way to and from the Kaltana training area as part of the Army's annual training cycle. There'll be an array of around 100 Army vehicles through Port Augusta, including trucks, buses, G-wagons and protected mobility vehicles from this Sunday through until late May. And residents in the Kaltana area can also expect increased noise and smoke from the exercises as more information will be available next week. Art lovers who also enjoy the wonder of high tech can be guaranteed an enlightening experience when they get along to the first national exhibit to visit Port Lincoln. It's art like you've never seen 
and it's on display in Port Lincoln. They'll enjoy the works. Some of them are quite slow and contemplative and quite a lot of them are quite um, exciting and dynamic and um, I think it'll be quite interesting for the region. The Light Moves exhibition is now in its second year of a touring Australia, showcasing the work of seven national artists. The visual display, perfect for all ages. The artists that are involved have all been approached to, um, are all um, examining the theme of bodies in space. The National Art Gallery frequently tours exhibitions around the country, but this is the first time it's made a stop on the Air Peninsula. We have about five or six um, exhibitions that are touring at any one time, um, depending on the time of the year, um, and um, we go to regional and larger metropolitan galleries as well as um, smaller ones like Port Lincoln. And there's every chance the gallery will be making a return visit soon. There's a lot of community support for, for the gallery itself, the staff's very professional, um, uh, and I'm really hoping that we can um, develop more of a relationship um, from here. Light Moves is on display until June 5th at the Port Lincoln Nautilus Arts Centre. Jason Kemp, Southern Cross News. And a clarification on a story that we ran last night on funding for Headspace in Wyala. Arium is not facing closure. That statement was my error and I apologise for any alarm that it has caused. After the break, the siren sounds on a brand new footy season. Our footy tippers are back on deck. OK, time for some sport now and the 2017 season is finally here and in Port Lincoln, both the footy and netball league is ready for that siren. There's been a lot of hard work during the off-season, but finally, tomorrow, our top-grade footy and netball players will start a new quest for a championship. The Netball League has been bolstered by a new addition, making it all the more competitive. We've got St Mary's back this year, which is great to see. They're able to fill a team, which gives us a six-team draw, which will be really exciting. New president Emma Brewster says there'd be nothing without the local supporters. Our committee is volunteers and all our scorers, timers, parents that come out every Saturday. We can't run without them. The girls braving the conditions to get some last-minute touch. We know it's cold, it's winter sport, but it's great to see people out here. Meantime, the football season bounces off tomorrow with just two games after reigning premiers Mallee Park accounted for Lincoln South on Anzac Day. Former Crow Graham Johncock won the Anzac medal and will look to make it three straight flags. Mallees are always competitive, they're always the benchmark, so they'll, they'll be the ones to beat. But I think um, there'll be a couple other dark horses as well, so nah, keen to see how it pans out. Jason Kemp, Southern Cross News. And they'll be taking the field two in Wyala this weekend with North and West, the teams to beat this season. But there are a few underdogs who just might surprise. After four months of practice and preparation, Wyala's footy teams are now ready for game day. The last training sessions ahead of the season were held this week as the league gets ready for another big year. It's forward to a good year, it's a pretty full year. Uh, some good competitions starting with the uh, Anzac Cup uh, on Saturday. We have uh, the traditional uh, match against the Spencer Golf League coming up on the June long weekend and this year too we have a few juniors carnivals running in Wyala. North and West have had a stranglehold on the Premiership in the last decade, winning seven of the last nine between them. And while they're the early favourites, our footy expert Damien Judd says this could be the year another team breaks their stranglehold, nominating South and Central as potential challengers. They've got a good coach, David Freeman, he really is quite passionate about his football and got some good players come in, they seem to have a knack of recruiting well. Central's mystery bag, but again, they've just got so many good players, they've still got players left over from their Premiership uh, John Hunt, Southern Cross News. Well, we've missed them just a little over summer, but they are back to hopefully not put the mockers on your team. Here's round one of our footy tips. Hello and welcome to another year of SGL football. Round one starts with Port and Lions set the clash at Port Over on Saturday. There's a bit of a buzz around the port side at the moment with a new coach and matches set to be played at their home ground. It could be a big 2017 season. I'll go with the Lions in this one. In Port Augusta on Saturday, as Solly's making the trip to face Central. Both sides have been boosted with off-season signings and will start the year with big expectations. I'm tipping Solly. South looks strong again this year and will be looking for a repeat of their 2016 season. West will want to start the year off with a win and this game should be fiery. I'm tipping South. <laughs> 
First up, grand final rematch, North Wyler versus West Wyler, Saturday at Bennett Oval. West didn't lose a game at all last year. They won the Premiership quite comfortably. And until we see evidence to the contrary, West will have to start favourites in this game. The other game on Saturday at Memorial Oval, the two teams that didn't play finals last year, Rapina versus Runa Bay. Again, both teams will be very happy to get a win first up in round one. They really struggled last year, and I think the experience of the Roos might get them across the line. And finally, on Sunday at Bennett Oval, the other finalists from last year, Central Wyler versus South Wyler, both had good seasons. They'll be looking to improve on that. Hard to tip this one in round one, but we'll go with the Roosters to sneak across the line. Welcome to Portland and Footy Tips and round one for 2017. The first game was actually played on Tuesday when Mallee Park put the rest of the league on notice with a huge 71-point win over Lincoln South in the grand final replay. In the first game on Saturday, we see Tasman's hosting Boston's at Ravendale Oval. Always hard to tip round one, but I hear that Tasman's picked up some senior players, whereas Boston's are looking to bring up some juniors. I'm going to tip Tasman's this early in the season with the senior players and tip them by four goals. In the last round, we have Marble Range heading to Centenary to take on Waybacks. Both teams have lost some players and gain some players, but I think Marble Range, after the 2016 season, have something to prove, and I'm going to tip them to win this one in a close one. I think this will be won by under two goals. AFL Broken Hill this week sees North take on West at the Jube. West yet to win a game this year and will be hungry. North, on the other hand, came off a loss from South last week and will be looking for another win. But I believe this game could go either way. I reckon the Westies will take it up to them and they may win by 8 to 10 points. The second game, Central playing South. South dominating this year as they have always. Central come off a win off the Westies but certainly will be the underdogs in this game, and I reckon South will take it out by an easy 30 to 40 points over the hill. Good to have you back, fellas, and looks like we can leave the beanie at home this weekend. There's mild conditions on the way, and after the break, all of your local forecasts. Well, there is going to be a little bit of cloud around over the weekend, but that will keep our nights a lot milder. Now, Friday's weather photo has made great use of some cloud formations with this snap taken by Tam Schwartz of the view of Port Perry from Waruna Island. And if you do have a weather photo that you'd like us to share, feel free to email us at localnews at sca.com.au. Well, mainly fine skies for our centres today with Port Lincoln enjoying the warmer conditions for 21, Broken Hill sunny and 17. On the satellite, cooler onshore winds bringing some cloud over our way by Sunday, but that should clear by Monday. On the water tomorrow, winds will be from the south-southwest at 10 knots, sunrise at 6.51 and sunset just after 5.40. Across the region tomorrow, mainly fine conditions, a small chance of some showers in Lincoln and Peary, but partly cloudy skies for everybody else and mild attempts of 19 to 21. To the four-day outlook and a cloudy Sunday for Port Lincoln, Cleve and Woodina, staying mild for Monday as well. Wyala's next few days will be similar, with Port Augusta also seeing overcast conditions for Sunday. And cloudy, but no rain really on the radar for Port Piri, Clare and Broken Hill on Sunday, with a mainly fine Monday to follow. Well, that is the weather. Don't forget, you can stay up to date with lots of local issues via our Facebook page or Twitter and catch those stories again on our YouTube channel. Whatever you're doing this weekend, have a safe one. We'll see you back here at 6.30 on Monday for Southern Cross News. So enjoy that footy and the rest of your night. See you soon.